there's actually a pretty cool cameo in this episode. Ooh, that's a hot mug, guy. Hey guys, this is my review for episode two of Supernatural season nine. This is Devil May Care. This episode is continuing along with Ezekiel uh, possessing Sam, as well as Dean and Sam coming back to the bunker, figuring out kind of what went on. And there's also returns such as Abaddon, Crowley, who actually comes out of the uh, trunk this time, and a few little interesting little tidbits throughout. Right off the bat, there's actually a Hunger Games reference. You're alive. Yeah, cause you're a crappy shot. Madness. Which is not considering how popular Hunger Games was at the time when this episode came out, but it's faded away. Poor Kevin is obviously having a rough time. I swear this man just can't get a break. And the brothers then proceed to bring in his abuser. <laughs> they put him into the demon torture area. And the reason why they want to use Crowley is because they want to use him to make him give up demons because... I guess at this point, yes, they have this gold mine in front of them who they know they've broken. So they're like, hey, we should probably do something with that. All the while, Abaddon returns somehow. Somehow Palpatine returns. And then she starts doing this lineup of all these demons. And I'll admit, I actually really liked Grandma Demon here saying she's making deals with kids. Kids love Grandma. Wait a minute. Hang on. That's Jason Voorhees' mom. Uh, at least from Freddy vs. Jason. You are like a big super dog who can't stop eating! This is... Paula Shaw, everyone. We actually had her do a little intro for our Freddy vs. Jason review, if you guys remember that. That was actually kind of cool. Jeremy, my special, special boy. Regardless, Abaddon's pretty pissed with how hell is being run because she's like, why is a deal maker doing it and not a warrior? And so she has a plan to basically get the brothers to give up where Crowley is. Uses her demons to take over some soldiers. And instead of, you know, taking over the military, she just takes over these three soldiers. I, I understand budget, but I figured that would have been a little bit more expanded on or more of a broader plan than just yeah, these guys. All the while, Abaddon is torturing a guy. It's all a ploy to trap the boy. So she kidnaps some hunters. One of them being one that they talked to earlier, this nameless dude. But don't worry, the episode's gonna try and make you care about this faceless, nameless dude later on. And of course, keeping Kevin next to his abuser is not going well. Crowley also have a mid-millennium crisis. I think that was the best tangent I could say there. Speaking of tangents, this set that they go to where they walk into the trap, I actually had to figure out where this was. This is Ajatan Studios. This shut down ages ago, but it was a huge set for the Falling Skies TV show. So they find the hunters and save them fairly easily, actually. Quite funny. There is a little bit of funny audio here. Go get it, you dicks! We find out that faceless, nameless hunter is in fact guilty, giving up the information about the other hunters. And he's like, oh, uh, I've got to make this right. You know, I I've got to sacrifice my... <laughs> Oh no! Anyway, last week... The plan starts to go to crap. Sam is cornered inside one of the diners and starts getting the shit kicked out of him. All the while, Dean is getting... Uh, I don't know, this whole bit with him and Abaddon. I feel like this is honestly out of book talk. There is so much smut happening in this conversation. It's like a torture slash kink tease. But thankfully, Ezekiel actually takes over Sam and he kills the three demons and it makes Abaddon skip. And once Dean finds out that Ezekiel's taken over, he's still kind of weirded out by the whole thing, obviously, because whenever Sam gets taken over, he turns into a Terminator. It's a different, different version of the soulless Sam. What's interesting here is Dean actually admits that he was selfish. He was selfish to have stopped Sam from closing the gates. Ezekiel tries to say it was out of love, but we kind of really know it was out of selfish. We're not going to try and deny that. And then the three of them leave the town all easy. Oh, wait a minute. What about that hunter who died? Ah, <laughs> uh, no one cares. When they get back to the house, they find out that Kevin's been taking out shit on Crowley, which of course he has. How many times has this happened where a character who wants to kill said person is in the room with him and they're like, don't talk to them. Don't acknowledge them. But it always happens. At this point, it's actually kind of a little bit irritating because I am referencing both before this season and after this season. Kevin wants to go and find his mom because Crowley is giving him some notes about the fact that she may be alive. Now, admittedly, this is referring to a pretty shitty fucking story bit that was in the last season where she just died off screen apparently so maybe Carver is like yeah you know what that was actually a really bad move on my part but Crowley is also giving up names about other demons kind of curious where this goes because again I don't remember this Dean actually has a heart to heart with him there's actually a really great conversation and Kevin is doing some fantastic acting but it's only just a little bit soured when Dean throws this little guilty line in there but hey if none of that matters to you then I won't stop you that is one big pile of shit. 
As the episode ends, Sam admits that he's happy because Kevin is there? He says he has friends and family around him, but it's just Dean and Kevin, so I don't know. And I actually, that leads me to what I liked about this episode being Dean is still contemplating what he's done. He actually recognizes the actions and the consequences of what he's doing because he doesn't know what the consequences will be. And I really like that shot as they're pulling away and you can see Dean is just like, have I done the right thing? So while we still don't have any plot really going on, we are still at least thickening the plot that we do have. We're still not really anywhere, but this episode felt a little bit better than the last one did, but only by a margin because there still was some massive plot contrivances in here. But I guess they're still trying to find their footing because maybe the first season had a solid idea and then they're just like, yeah, we don't really know what to do here. So in the end, I'm going to give this episode a four out of seven. Like I said, it was pretty average. It's all right. There's some decent bits. There's some cool little action bits in here. There's some funny bits in here. There's some heartfelt bits in here and then there's some contemplated bits. Those are my thoughts about this episode. Let's see what you guys have to say. Devil May Care sets up more interesting groundwork for what Sam and Dean have to deal with after choosing not to close the gates of hell. Not only do they have to deal with angels pitted against each other, they have to deal with demons who have pitted against each other as well. Season 5 was about angels versus demons. Season 9 is about the hierarchies of heaven and hell against themselves while humanity is caught in the crossfire. Meanwhile, hunters have to adjust to the changes and allegiances are tested. I love that we get to see Kevin develop more as a character and even if he is essentially replacing Bobby as he did for the boys in earlier seasons. Jeremy Carver is cooking an interesting unique season it just takes a little bit of time to appreciate it's very interesting that you say that because there's a different comment later on here i still think sam's encounter with tracy girl should have happened last season something to push sam over the edge to finishing the trials but even if it is out of place it felt good for sam's arc that he's finally accepting his hunter life something that gets resolved next season this was sort of out of touch in season five with the body swap but i feel it would needed more fleshing out and feels like a conclusion to sam's arc that was brought up in season eight where sam gave up a normal life twice and it wasn't for dean but it was for his own desires only wish it was wrapped up in the season then maybe we wouldn't have had the train wreck i also love dean's speech to kevin at the end after all the guys have been through he deserves so much cheering up and say having someone saying he's doing a good job. While they've never had the greatest of relationships, I always feel like Dean and Kevin had a strong relationship and felt the writers had made him harsh to Kevin the last season was to balance things out with Sam ditching him for a year. But I believe that Dean said to, he does think of Kevin as family, which is more tragic setup with what comes later, <laughs> but it's well set up, written set up in this season and known for being terribly written. Oh, and I should note, I personally loathe this season. Oh, great. Oh, great. Because you're not the only person who's about to say that. Jay the Zoomster here saying that this is his least favorite season of the entire show, but I will say I don't think it actually starts off too bad. I like the first four episodes or so a decent bit. It's just the season loses momentum super quick and the dumb drama between Sam and Dean holds it back a lot. Devil May Care is solid, but the premiere was always my favorite of the first half. Great review as always. Really? Holy crap. I I'm already kind of bored, so now I'm a little bit worried. Good to have you back doing the thing. Devil May Care, to my memory, was a pretty mad episode. Uh, they try to set up characters for the weak stuff, but it falls flat. Return of Abaddon was surprised, considering the last time we saw her, she was engulfed in holy fire, something that would definitely kill any demon, but that's where the show is now, fast and loose. It doesn't have a badass moment like not Ezekiel switching bodies and take control of Sam. I do wish we could have seen him John Wick those demons. Because Sam has a badass moment, I suppose it'll be a 3 out of 7 for me, and I remember really disliking the season of how they botched the Angel stuff, so I'm anticipating this to be one of the highest ratings I'll ever give for the season. There is not a lot of goodwill already. <laughs> Dean and Sam plan on what to do with Crowley wasn't good to me, even in the predicament of Crowley is in, he always tries to manipulate it, even though he's right about Kevin being a prisoner as much as him, unfortunately. It's interesting between the scenes between Galadriel uh, and Dean talking about trust and mistakes. Dean was wrong to convince Kevin to stay in the bunker because Sam does have an angel in his body. I'm surprised it's never dawned on him that he, something could go wrong. That reflects on what I said. I thought Dean's a bit gaslighty to Kevin there, so I'm not exactly in his favor either. Thank you guys for your comments. We're now moving on to I'm No Angel, episode number three. Make sure to give me your guys' comments about that episode down below, and I'll read those off in the next review. Hope you guys are enjoying the video so far. That's two down, 21 more to go. All right, guys. I'll see you guys next week.